Earth Chief Mixoma. And then let's see 10. I've got a big circle here, so I guess that means something's good in the middle there. And let's see. This is a 35-year-old female with a history of neurofibromatosis 1 and a rapidly growing soft tissue mass in the deep soft tissue of the trunk. If only we got specific histories like that every time, right? Yeah, there are big pink, and I feel like epithelioid and rhabdoid can really overlap sometimes, right? Because they're both cells that have abundant cytoplasm. That's eosinophilic. <clears throat> so, and then if you take the kind of epithelioid or rhabdoid cells out of the equation, the background cells that we're looking at really are pretty spindly and kind of run in fascicles, right? Like this. And I can't remember where, but I mean, there's, there's mitoses around atypia, nuclear atypia. So it's a malignant looking spindle cell tumor that's arranged in fascicles. So if you just had a sp malignant spindle cells in kind of, they're almost a little bit herringbone, huh? Can you kind of vaguely hallucinate that? Herringbone is, you know, means that like the fascicles, instead of being at 90 degree angles, like say in a leiomyosarcoma or leiomyoma, they kind of come into each other at very sharp angles. And so they give you the kind of fish bone, fish backbone look or chevron look. This one is certainly not the best example of of herringbone pattern. I actually have that on my list of things to make as a video about herringbone uh, pattern. But when we see malignant herringbone looking thing, uh, spindle cell tumor in the setting of NF1, the main thing we want to think of is malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, which is a, sar a neural sarcoma that um, uh, people with NF1, unfortunately, have a, a significant chance of developing. And also can, it can occur sporadically outside of the setting of NF1. So in this example here, and I didn't give you any immunohistochemical findings, so it makes it harder, but this one here, has these big rhabdoid cells, and those actually would stain with desmin and myogenin. So they're actual rhabdomyoblasts, tons of them in this case. Usually it's, it's much more focal. So when you have a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor that has heterologous uh, muscle differentiation, um, and you can almost see, you can't really see striations, but you can see, I don't remember, maybe the circles because some of these had striations, I can't remember. But if I flip the condenser here, you can see how like, see how the cytoplasm of these is like stringy, right? It's because it's made of myogenic fibers. And so it's like these little swirly, stringy, um, swirly looking cytoplasm. And that's characteristic of rhabdomyoblasts. They often do that. And sometimes you will see actual cross striations. I guess I should have looked before I, we did this so that I could find the cross striations, although it's very hard often to get them to show up in pictures uh, because it's one of those things you have to kind of see the three dimensionality to to get it. And this one also even has a little bit of almost like kind of cartilaginous look there, see? Like kind of strange. So anytime a sarcoma makes a, a tissue type or a tumor cell type that's not its nor the not normal for that native tissue, we can say that that's heterologous differentiation. It's just kind of a fancy old time word for, for tumors that are making different tissue types than they're supposed to. And we can see carcinomas do that too, right? When they get poorly differentiated, like in in the, you know, the uterus, sometimes a, what used to be called malignant mixed mullerian tumor. I, I don't know. I don't think it's still called that, but, but high grade carcinosarcomas or sarcomatoid carcinomas that develop osteosarcoma or chondrosarcoma or rhabdo component, that's called heterologous differentiation. So uh, tr um, when, when MPNST does that, it's called malignant triton tumor, triton like the god of the sea, but actually that's not what it's named after. It's actually named after, um, uh, the triton salamander. And my understanding from my brief reading on this is that when you cut the tail off, I don't know why someone does that, the poor salamander, but if you cut the tail off the salamander, as it grows back, there's both neural component and skeletal muscle component mingled together that kind of reminded someone in history and pathology, I guess, of this tumor. And that was the kind of thought is that it resembled what triton salamander tails are doing when they regrow. Okay, that's cool. We all now know that tumors come from stem cells, right? Tumor stem cells, and that sometimes those cells have the potential to give rise to various other tissue types that are not the normal tissue, right? It's not, 
malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor doesn't grow from like normal benign nerve, just like squamous cell carcinoma doesn't grow from normal benign epidermis. There's some stem cell, right, that mutates. That's that's the kind of theory we have. Well, I've like looked around this area for a while here, and I'm not finding the striations. As soon as we stop recording, I'm sure I'll find it. But I think the, the moral of that story is that cross striations in rhabdomyoblasts are very hard to find. The time you're more likely to find it is in the setting of heterologous rhabdomyosarcomatous differentiation. True rhabdomyosarcomas, primary rhabdomyosarcomas, I feel like you really have to get lucky to find cross striations. I feel like the best ones that I've ever seen were in the setting of malignant triton tumor or um, other settings where there was heterologous rhabdomyosarcoma differentiation in some other type of tumor. And uh, my understanding is that it's because the, the skeletal muscle that gets produced here is a little bit more mature, uh, whereas in true rhabdomyosarcomas, it's a little more immature. But the kind of stringy pink cytoplasm here is very characteristic of rhabdomyoblasts. I think that's helpful. And um, let's see, I've got a whole long video about MPNST. It's kind of a complicated topic, but the basic take home point is that the ideal thing you want to see is a sarcoma that's growing out of a nerve, out of a neurofibroma, or in a patient that has known NF1. Outside of that setting, you should be really hesitant to definitively call something MPNST, although it does happen. Uh, we do now have a nice stain for it. The, um, it's called H3K27ME3. I had to practice it a bunch of times to say it from memory. Um, and it's a... Uh, nuclear marker that is lost in malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors, particularly ones that occur sporadically outside of the NF1 setting. So it's very helpful in that context. It can be lost in other things like melanomas can lose it, um, D-diff liposarc occasionally. So it's not a totally specific marker, but it can be very helpful. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, Oh yeah, and paradoxically, malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors do not usually express S100 or SOX10. If they do, about half of them will be negative and the other half is gonna usually be weak patchy staining, not strong diffuse. There are rare exceptions, but usually MPNSTs are, are either negative or weak patchy. Strong diffuse S100 should make you think much more of like metastatic melanoma or something like that. With the exception being epithelioid MPNSTs, which do have strong S100 and they do look like metastatic melanoma. And that's usually the main differential there. So anyway, that's why I made a long video about MPNST because it's a very complicated topic with lots of misconceptions. And these are very aggressive tumors, unfortunately, all MPNSTs. The, the triton tumor aspect of it doesn't change its behavior to my knowledge, but it does sometimes cause confusion because it can look very different than traditional MPNST. So uh, really this is like one of the more dramatic examples of triton tumor that I've seen because there's so many rhabdomyoblasts in here. So. All right, so that is malignant triton tumor um, and PNST. All right, I think that's all 10. Well done. Well, thanks, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you.